I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Green's Bengals going up against Fitzgerald's Cardinals. And with that, it's off to the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, where we'll hand it over to our broadcasting team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Arizona Cardinals. Two of the bigger surprises of 2015, the Cards and Bengals are underway on EA Sports. That's fielded in the end zone. Another pistol look here. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. Pushes over him. Now that's just not right. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. I know it's going to become a tired story very soon. David Johnson played wide receiver first at Northern Iowa before he became a running back. But those skills have translated very well in the NFL right because he runs it really well, but being able to split him out of the backfield and throw it to him, that leads to over 100 yards from scrimmage just about every week. And it did in their week two win, 143 yards combined in those two areas of rushing and receiving. Second down, offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. Mirror, mirror, mirror. Let's go, let's go. Johnson on the counter. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Back-to-back -back runs that were stacked up. Offensively, now you've got to think to yourself, do we change blocking assignments? Do we change formations? Do we change looks in order to try and get the running game going? When you talk about Larry Fitzgerald, after a while you're just gushing, aren't you? I mean, let's face it. He tries to be the best receiver in the league, tries to get his game right each and every year, and even get better, and even went back and got his college degree this past offseason as a promise to his mother. Had his 99 and 100 touchdown catches in week one, then got 101 this past Sunday. And he blocks, too. Here we go. One, 18. On oh, first.
First and ten, it's Palmer dumping it off for Johnson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. play Johnson 15 yards on the pick up there and that'll be good for an Arizona first down and they're getting him involved early you feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area but they want him involved just as you said they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game but they must like the matchups they're getting Offense walks to the line for play number seven Chief, of the drive. Chief. Chief. Let's go. Throwing now, Palmer on first down. He's got time, and it's caught. It's Floyd. Touchdown, Cardinals. Michael Floyd, a 12-yard touchdown grab, and the Cardinals take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. And the Cardinals will go up 7 to nothing. Now Catanzaro after the touchdown to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. They come out here in the eye. Blue tip. Blue tip. Dagger. Dagger. Zebra. Zebra. Eifert, the man in motion. Zebra. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And he'll take this up near the 35, Zebra. maybe Zebra. the 34. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. It's second down. Dalton looking. And caught. Right side. Green. And he's brought down. You know what was surprising from their game against the Steelers last weekend was A.J. Green, only two catches. Andy Dalton threw the ball 54 times. You would have thought Green would have had bigger numbers. Had 12 catches in their season opening victory against the Jets. So the Steelers, they knew about A.J. Green, and they made it a mission to not let him beat them. Giovanni Bernard, nothing but green grass. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Giovanni Bernard, 53 yards. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And this one through the uprights and good. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Did they stick with that? 
I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Let's look at this offense now, and let's talk about John Brown. An exciting young town from Pittsburgh State, home of the Gorillas. Hard to cover, great moves in short areas. On second down, Johnson. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Fitzgerald's got it right side. 23 yards on the play. Strength throwing the football downfield has never been an issue for this big guy. I still remember the first time I met him. He was playing for USC, and when I got introduced to him, I thought I was meeting their starting tight end, not their starting quarterback. Such a presence, Carson Palmer. Very much so. He's had it ever since he entered campus there and still has it today. The intended receiver was David Johnson, and it'll be second and ten. And the Bengals starting defensive unit now. Geno Atkins is an absolute force as a defensive tackle. Forces every offense that he plays against to alter their game plan. All right now, one, eight, eight. And Palmer gives to Johnson. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball... He's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. It goes as a gain of six, and it's a first down. Ready to go now in the second quarter. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. It's the Cardinals in possession of the football, and they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Another part of this Cardinal rotation. This is Chris Johnson. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. On third down, Johnson. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. So it looks like the offense isn't going anywhere. They're going to go for it on fourth and seven. Fourth down, here's Palmer. And he's got Fitzgerald. Give him 14 on the play. And the decision to go for it pays off. They've got a first and goal. Well, the field goal attempt is well in hand. They had that, but they decided to go for it anyway. Extreme confidence, it looks like. Yeah, but I bet the defense is going to remember this one, right? They kind of rubbed their nose in it. They go play action here on first down. Throwing middle but it's incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target, and it'll be second and goal. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no right one now. gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, and that'll be caught by Gresham for a Cardinal touchdown. Jermaine Gresham, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Cardinals are in for six. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Now Canton Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. And he'll take it up past the 25, 
to the 26-yard line. And out now, here come the Bengals. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, give up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Well, while we have a second, let's look at the fantasy football world. Some of those guys that were expected to be elite taken in most leagues round one, how do you think they fare? Now, partner, I should be asking you because I know you exist <laughs> in this world in a big way, but it looks like the guys at the top of the list are doing pretty well. Odell Beckham Jr., Antonio Brown was a monster in week one. And Julio Jones, he's coming along really, really well. And then the guys who run the ball, David Johnson in Arizona, boy, catches it, runs it, doing a great job. Zebra, and don't zebra. sleep on Ezekiel Elliott. That 83 yards and a touchdown. Don't trade him. They're giving him the ball a lot, that's for sure. And then D'Angelo Williams has been excellent. Dalton. He completes it to Boyd. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. What's fun to watch is these college receivers transitioning into the NFL and how they grow as route runners. Because a lot of times now in the college game, the spread offenses, there aren't that many routes that they're actually running. Most of the time, they're just trying to find open space and present themselves to the quarterback as easy targets. But in the NFL, you've got to run the entire route tree, and you've got to run it well if you expect to get open. So Dalton now on the right side, caught by Green. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air Zebra. or to the ground. On second down, Hill, and good penetration here. He'll get this down Zebra, only Zebra. to about the 49-yard line. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands so they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. They'll try and run for it. Here's Hill. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. And the wide out in motion. First and ten for Dalton. And he finds a man on a crossing round. It's a gain of 20 that time. And it'll give the Bengals a first down. That crossing round is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. It's a nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage Dagger, after it. Dagger. And now a first down following that long gain. Dalton, first and ten. His throw incomplete. Brandon LaFell, the intended receiver. And that'll make it second and ten. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback, are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Ten yards still left on second down. Now a first carry for their fullback. Yeah, not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards Zebra, to go. Zebra. 
And again, they'll go right back to their fullback. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Two minutes to play here in the first half. More from the desert after this. They come up in an offset eye. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. It's caught. Left side, Brandon LaFell. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up second down. And this time, they go underneath for a simple pitch and catch. And not only do you get the pitch and catch, Brandon, but you're able to keep the receiver moving when you hit him with the drag route. And the seemingly endless drive continues. So offense moving a little too slow there, could not get set, and they get the penalty. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. They come out here in the eye. Following the penalty, it's Hill. And he's brought down. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up. Now here's a timeout defensively coming from the Cardinals. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. First down and goal, the off, and he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Ryan Hewitt taking it in. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And that's why you have the fullback, Charles. Couldn't get it in the play before with the smaller guy. Turned to a little more power. They score it. And now it has to warm the hearts of a lot of old school football fans. They love when they get to see a little bit of power football. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. And the Cardinals offense here ready to take over. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, defense. pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Well, we'll see. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. The wide receiver moving to a new spot. From midfield now, here's Palmer. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Now a play fake here on first down. Finding time. Trying to lay one up deep. They were trying to get it there to Michael Floyd. And that'll make it second and ten. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. On a 
able to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Second and ten. It's Palmer again. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Regular, regular. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up Red, third. Mirror, mirror, mirror. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Now Palmer on third and long, surveying the field. He's going to let this one go deep. The tight end, Jermaine Gresham, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up fourth down. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays, and you don't get many opportunities to dial them up, and they just did, and they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Palmer in the offense, staying put. They're going to try for it on Bring fourth down. Let's go, let's go. They're going on fourth down. It's Palmer. He's going to try and he's got it with the 15. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in corner number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five yards with a new rule as he's taken down right at the 20-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And, of course, Charles, through just two weeks of the season, quite a few 2-0 teams. Good news for those fan bases since 1990 when the NFL made the move to two wild cards. Close to 60% of teams that started 2-0 got into the postseason. And I'm going to keep it strictly in the AFC right now. Here's what impressed me about some of these 2-0 teams. How about New England? All right, Jimmy Garoppolo has been the starting quarterback. He gets hurt. Jacoby Brissett comes in, and they still win the game. How about the Broncos and Trevor Simeon? They're off to a 2-0 start. I love what Houston was able to do to get to 2-0. Exercised a big demon in beating Kansas City, who routed them last year in the playoffs. Those teams have really impressed me. And last but not least, Pittsburgh focused and beat Cincinnati to get to 2-0. They come out here in the eye. On third down, here's Hill. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Call that a loss of seven to bring up fourth. The immediately flashed through my mind was third and one. It has to be a physical run. It has to be that physical play. Get what you can. Be your own blocker if you have to. But don't end up losing yardage on that play. That's just an absolute no-no. Can't happen except we just saw it. It did, and it really changes the course of the game. So here we go. The offense is going to stay out there. They're going for it on fourth and eight. Time running out here on the play clock. Hey, so they are going for it. Now Dalton, he's got his man, Boyd. 
11 yards on the pickup, and they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. I don't know if I agree with that. I guess they don't care if I agree with that. <laughs> but, boy, you have to be surprised by that, right? I, I definitely was surprised that they decided to go for it in this situation. But they must have either felt like they either had a great play call on or they're trying to show extreme confidence. Eifert, the man in motion. First and ten for Dalton. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. Hills hit, and he lost the football. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They go play action here on first down. Fitzgerald's got it right side. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So another snag for Fitzgerald, who in 2015 became the youngest player at age 32 to hit 1,000 receptions. He's piling up some more. Well, the way he's playing today, it's almost like he's trying to get a second 1,000 just in one contest. And when they're operating this well and clicking like that... <laughs> Looking for Floyd, and it's intercepted. Down the numbers. There he goes. Picked off by the Alabama man, Drake Kirkpatrick. And a super return as he gets us all the way down inside the 25-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the yeah. coach's address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Giovanni Bernard, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bengals are once again going to retake the lead. The extra point coming now for Nuja. And this is no good. It's a missed extra point. Boy, in a tight game, how important might that turn out to be here as the second half rolls along? the touchdown. Here's Mike Nugent now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had a nice little drive going last time through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. The defensive line disperses let's a little go, bit here, go. maybe expecting a pass. Second and ten now, and it's Palmer. He's got time in the pocket. And got his man complete! And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. 
give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. And he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. All right, now. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Final minute now of the third quarter. Let's go, let's go. On second down, here's Palmer. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big-time drop. Here's Johnson. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line.
everybody, I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Roethlisberger Steelers going up against Palmer's Cardinals. So let's send you out to the Valley of the Sun as we welcome in our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you very much, Larry. EA Sports coverage of the NFL. The National Football League is here and on the air. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Arizona Cardinals. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. They come out with one back and three tight ends. On the ground, this is Johnson. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Right now, what? Off the play fake. Here's Palmer. And this one complete to Jermaine Gresham. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to swing the tight end free downfield for the completion. down carry here for Johnson and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48 yard line give him a couple on the carry there second and eight and the big boys up front in the trenches what do you think of the O-line Charles I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive they know what the man next to them is going to do at all times and they operate as a terrific unit let's go let's go they go to Johnson again and they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. Ryan Shazier ran so fast at his combine that many people thought someone actually ran for him. He's a linebacker who ran sub 4-4, and he uses that speed to make plays all over the field. So second down was a run play. Now let's see what they do on third. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Here's Palmer to throw. Finding fouls complete. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. It's a pickup of 16 there that'll lead to a new set of downs. Well, there's the first time in this game that Carson Palmer finds Larry Fitzgerald. Likely won't be the last, but how about the way these two have helped each other's careers? Yeah, they really have. It's hard to believe with Fitzgerald, well, really, both of these guys, how long they've been in the league now, but Fitzgerald got a third overall pick back in 04. Yeah, how about that? Remember, Carson Palmer, a former Heisman Trophy winner, he's finally found a real home in Arizona. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Gives to Johnson. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. David Johnson, a 16 yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. And the Cardinals.
Devils will go up 7 to nothing. Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Throw on first down with Roethlisberger. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. On your screen now, here are the offensive starters. At wideout, Antonio Brown is certainly someone that the defense always has to account for. Without a doubt, a true number one receiver. It doesn't matter to him how defenses want to cover him. He sees it as a challenge and knows how to defeat him. Now a carry for the veteran. This is D'Angelo Williams. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. to the days when D'Angelo Williams was part of a really good running back tandem in Carolina. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. On third down, Roethlisberger. This is Bell on the dump off. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a carry for the former Michigan State man, Le'Veon Bell. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And here is the Cardinal defense. Calais Campbell's one of the tallest defensive ends in the league. Has the ability to get low and play the run, and adds excellent kick-blocking ability. So we've got a second and five. Watch right, watch right, watch right, watch right. Set, like 80. Go, 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 go. They'll go again with Bell. And he is going to lose yardage here. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense. They were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a large yardage possibility? A nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So 
So they're going to come to the line here, and it appears try to go for it on fourth. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Here we go on fourth down with Roethlisberger. And he locates Wheaton complete. That one good for 10 yards. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. on first down. Wheaton with a catch right side. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him... I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. In motion left comes Bryant. Play clock winding down. Back to the ground, this time with Bell. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Two yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he's brought down. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style, where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Bryant with a catch right side. Call it a one-yard gain of the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you, plays like that, you at least expect a first down there just one yard. An extra DB added here for the cards on third. Blitz of play coverage. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. 
More from the desert after this. And Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So it was a drive that seemed to go on for an eternity forever. Our sponsors were probably saying, hey, we need to get our products in here on these commercials. But after all of that, three points is the result. Yeah, it's hard to say who came out ahead there, isn't it? On one hand, you kept the defense out there a long time. But after controlling the ball for so long and just moving the ball incrementally down the field, a field goal seems like a bad result. and drop many like that one. Second down. Okay, let's talk rookies here while we have a second. Who's impressed you through the first couple weeks of the new guys? Well, a decent number of players, but I'm going to down focus a little bit here, okay? Because we've talked about the rookie quarterbacks. Dak Prescott and Dallas being one of them. But don't forget the runner, Ezekiel Elliott. He's really starting to come on. And then flip over to the defensive side. The San Francisco 49ers have played pretty tough in the first couple of weeks. DeForest Buckner out of Oregon. He's doing a really nice job on the defensive side. And Corey Coleman, Will Fuller, a couple guys on the offensive side switching it back there. They've been really good. They know how to find the end zone, don't they? They get there, and they get there in a hurry. That one was intended for John Brown. And it'll be second and ten. I know we're doing this game live, but let's, let's step into the film room for just a second because when they review this play, oh, the negatives are going to be incredible on this one. Rolling out to his right. Yeah, he's right-handed, so that's a natural spot for him. But he throws back across his body back into traffic. Big no-no. Oh, that's a monster no-no. The only good thing that happened, it fell incomplete. Very fortunate. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They come out five wide, three of them to the right go, side. Second and ten. It's Palmer again. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. A big play there on the screen pass. 35 yards. After that nice game there for the rest of the game, the defense is going to have to respect the running backs as passing threats as well. Not just play them strictly to run the football. They may be able to get downfield and catch it too. His first carry. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Now it's Palmer out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. A great play there. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Cardinals now adding on to their lead. And he knocks it through. Now Captain Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Hauled in by Wheaton over the middle. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Offense in a good spot here, second and two. 
Brown, the lone receiver left. On second down, Roethlisberger. On the right side, caught by Green. And he's brought down after a good gain. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. A screen to Bell. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And Green with a catch left side. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Second down now after the incompletion. Second and ten now. It's Roethlisberger. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. He hit his first. This one from 40 yards out. And Boswell's kick is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. That's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee, and that's at the 25. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here at half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Partner through two weeks of the season. What have you thought of the rookie quarterbacks? You know, what made me think of that, Jared Goff did dress last week. Obviously, he didn't play, but he was on the sideline. But what have you thought of some of the rookie quarterback play? Well, uh, I'm just going to start with Jared Goff because so many people are wondering, hey, how come he's not out there? Well, listen, Carson Palmer, remember when he got drafted number one overall? Sat for an entire year in Cincinnati. Had to learn the ropes. So sometimes that happens. You bring him up along a little bit slower. But Dak Prescott... I'm incredibly impressed with not just the poise, but the playmaking ability. And he has Dallas at one and one right now. Jacoby Brissett had to come in and play for yeah. New England after Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. Led him to a touchdown drive, and they hung on and won against Miami. And Carson Wentz, the learning curve continues for the rookie quarterback in Philadelphia. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Easy, 
Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. He gets it to Brown, complete. And a gain there of 11 yards. And I think their fans are saying, hey, where's that Roethlisberger to Brown connection been in this one? First time they get together is in the second half. I don't think any of us would have predicted that going in because we know how valuable that is to their offense. And that could be a big reason why they're not winning right now. And the play clock's running down. Play clock all the way to zero. Didn't get the snap off. Five-yard penalty. And you see the head coach writing that note on his play sheet right now. He's going to be addressing that with his staff. A sense of urgency. Get to the line of scrimmage. Snap the ball. Bend to throw again. Wheaton with a catch right side. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Give him eight on the play, and it'll make it a second down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a night. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Martavis Bryant, 51 yards. And the Steelers are within a two-point conversion of tying this game. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. Roethlisberger looking to throw. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Now a hit and a loose football. And great field position coming up in the red zone at the 17-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. When you kick off and you go downfield and get the ball back, that's what I call a great opportunity. In a one-score game, I always circle, and you know this, but in my play-by-play -play sheet, I circle big plays. It could be turning points. This could be a turning point. Did you put a second circle around this? Or this I put a star. Big. I put a star. <laughs> this is Bell, and he'll push his way up to about the 14. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. On second down, Roethlisberger. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just goes right over the top of it because he can see everything. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell taking it in from a yard out. And the Steelers are able to strike for six. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. They're down in this game, a chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Now Palmer. He hits Floyd on the right. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. 
And it'll be second and very short. And now they're in the hurry up. Now Palmer to throw on second down. He's got time. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Throwing now, Palmer on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. You know, you and I were talking before the game, a surprising number. Teams that start 0-2, just 12% of them in the history have gone on to the playoffs. But certainly all is not lost, but that number surprised us a little bit. Yeah, it's a tough number, and it's daunting. But what each head coach has to do with his 0-2 team is point out the teams that did get to the playoffs from that record. I think the Chargers started 0-4 one season and ended up winning their division, so all is not lost. And I'm looking particularly at Miami. I think that they have the makings of a really good team if they come together. Indianapolis, we know behind Andrew Luck, they can score a lot of points and they can explode at any moment. And Washington had a rough start last year and ended up winning the NFC East. I think they know how to recover. And that incompletion was caused by the defense. I think they were trying to get one into the middle of the field, trying to find a receiver there. But they were in zone defense. And what are the advantages of being in zone? Eyes and reaction. Eyes meaning all eyes are on the quarterback and able to react when he throws the football and rally to that spot. And that's exactly what happened there. Able to get there and knock it away. I wouldn't be shocked at all right now if there's a look of surprise on the big fella's face because he had the route that he wanted, running the corner, and usually he's able to use his body and catch the football, but a really nice play by the defenders, able to knock it away. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. So here we go now, an extra defensive back in there on third and ten. Palmer now. And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great comp. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have the football, and will take over at the 24-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. So they just got the football on an interception. They almost gave it right back the same way. And you know, when you look over to the bench after that type of a play, number one is pure relief. Didn't give it up. But it's not the coach you're worried about yelling at you. It's those guys on defense who just intercepted the pass who want to break over there. Hey, take care of the football, man. And yeah, they're going to speed things up here. Palmer now to throw on third down. And he's got Fitzgerald. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. I'd have to say that whenever you see a good post route run, they do not like to let it end without the catch. Hence, that great diving play. Yeah, lay it up there, let him go get it, and he got it. They'll send one of those two tight ends in motion. They'll try and run. This is Johnson. And he is in for six. Touchdown, Cardinals. David Johnson, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cardinals have once again taken the lead. Throwing his Palmer. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. Now Cat and Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And a pretty good return. 
long turn here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And last time was a pretty one play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. They come up in an offset eye. They'll try and get the running game going with Bell. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. And we've got a dandy here. A one-point game as we begin the fourth. Seven yards to go on second down. On second down, here's Raffelsberger. Green with a catch left side. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. In motion left here, Antonio Brown. Time running out here on the play clock. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. They come out here in the eye. They stay on the ground. This time it's Williams. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. There's no doubt about it. That's just one of the best connections in the league. Big Ben throwing it to Antonio Brown, and Antonio Brown has turned himself into such a player. A low-round draft pick, but you can't beat his determination or work ethic. Big Ben welcomes that. And Big Ben won a Super Bowl 23, youngest ever to do so, has never looked back. And he's brought down. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I'm still an old-school football guy, and anytime you see a big-time running play, <laughs> that fires me up. And if I'm on offense right now, in the position they're in now, inside the 10-yard line, I think after the way they've run it, they've set themselves up for a good play-action pass opportunity right here. So after that big game, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll need to get the playoffs quickly. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. You got to be ready for anything when you play defense against this head coach. That is not something you'd expect to see here in the red zone, but it winds up getting him a few yards. Spotted at the four, it's second and goal. On second down, it's Bell. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And he is not going to make it. 
so they won't be able to move this lead up to a touchdown as it'll remain a five-point ball game. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Cardinal offense now making their way back out onto the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused? He's got a man complete. Two veterans there, Palmer to Fitzgerald, and even 40 yards. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, you do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it's certainly... And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Arthur Motes coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now Palmer to throw. And Gresham's got it over the middle. Touchdown, Cardinals! Jermaine Gresham, 42 yards. And the Cardinals have taken the lead here in the fourth. And how about that giving us our fifth lead change of the game? It's been back and forth. No doubt about it. And right now, they're ahead, but they can't relax at all because if we've had five lead changes, I'm kind of betting on a six. Yeah, we might see a six. Now Cat and Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Marcus Wheaton was what he was looking for. And that'll make it second and ten. I think that's a big-time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. Again on second and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Dayon Buchanan. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll try and run down some clock with Johnson. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. And that run was what a lot of people called an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they... Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second down following the run. They come out here in the eye. Here's Johnson. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. And the Steelers signal for another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here, and we'll be back. 
They'll hand it off now. Johnson. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. A good pick up there. Seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. Now hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Let's go. Let's go. They're going on fourth down. It's Palmer. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Now Captain Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Back to throw. Rolling to his right. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. A screen to Bell. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Well, Charles, there's an old saying, don't let a loss beat you twice. You're exactly right about that, Brandon. When you look at it and all of your preparation went into winning this week, now you have to absorb a loss and find a way to shake it off. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Cardinals as we say so long from Glendale.